guys, a lot of people have been asking me how do you get your head around Sylvan and it's really really combo based so um, when I made a deck profile a lot of people were confused as to how it works, what kind of opening plays you should be going for and uh, basically how ham you should be going. So what I was going to do, I was going to make a video um, going through a few first op like opening turns. Um, I'm always going to be going second because we're assuming the worst basically. Um, if I have to wait a turn, I'll usually just be doing a burst turn, but if I have to wait a turn, um, I'll probably just make a decision based on the worst situation likely, which is usually either, um, you know, units go from my Felgrand or a, I have to, or my field is wiped completely. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd go through a couple of um, first turns just and um, talk over them. So I'm just gonna draw open, obviously. <laughs> Uh, so we've opened the Fertilizer and the Lone Fire, uh, we're going second. Uh, the Guardi Oak actually is quite nice, so we'd probably lo we'd uh, go through all of our Lone Fires first. Obviously. Um, because we have Fertilizers, so I'd go one, two... Where are you? <laughs> Three? And then I'd go into Hermadry. Um, who is just basically for the draw power. We want to search out the charity because we've got a cherub sprout in our hand so we probably just want to dig for it to be honest and um, uh, I'm gonna go completely blind. Yeah, I'll usually hit something. So we hit the peacekeeper, res is the lone fire, we get a draw uh, which is really nice. This is, we could chain this sage to the peacekeeper actually um, because you're meant to draw first. Uh, so I'm gonna summon the, the uh, sage quarrier um, I'm also going to use the Lone Fire. I'm going to deck them before I use the Sage Quarrier, yeah? and I'm going to go for another Hermitry. Um, it'd be quite nice to get a couple of Hermitries in Grave for um, Fertilizers next turn. Um, probably go into a Felgran this turn. Um, but let's just see. Uh, I'm going to use the Sage Quarrier first. Oh, good thing I did. And then I'm going to use the Hermitry, which was a glow bulb, which is really nice. And then we're going to get a Kamashrima with our draw. Um, and I'm going to use the glow bulb's effect to excavate the uh, Mystical Space Typhoon. Go for the glow bulb. Um, and then I'm going to... I'm probably going to make Stardust at this point. As it's a nice bit of extra protection. Um, I'd make the Stardust and I'd also make the Felgrand. So as you can see we have a really nice hand, we have two Miracle Fertilizers in it, um, we've got some normal summons and if we manage to get the charity, I don't know, when, oh my god that was so lucky, what the hell. <laughs> um, if we manage to get the charity, which will be next turn apparently, um, because that was crazy ass luck. Um, yeah, when we get to the charity, we'll probably be able to stall our board, let's be honest here. This Felgrand can protect the Stardust, vice versa. They can protect each other. Um, and when we do eventually draw the charity next turn, let's assume a unit went from our Felgrand, because that typically happens. Um, unless our opponent has, you know, Double Dark Hole, Fregeki, whatever, we will, we will have a board something like this. Um, or yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Um, and we are going to obviously start with the charity. One, two, three. Oh, the Treacherous Trap Hole. I love that card in this deck. Um, it just destroys two monsters on the field if you don't have any traps in your graveyard. So um, you can destroy your own monster and an opponent's monster, vice versa, whatever. Um, and we're going to place back the... I'd go for the... Cherub Sprout and the possibly the Guardi Oak because the Guardi Oak will stack for us. Um, oh no 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 okay well it doesn't really matter we're probably about to res a Hermitry so we're gonna put those two back on top of the deck and then we're gonna activate our fertilizer. We're going to bring back uh, Hammer Tree. And then we're going to excavate one. We're going to draw. Draw into exactly the same Guardia because we just. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to get back a. We're going to get out a um, non tuner as we have Glurt Bulb in the grave. Uh, have we used Glurt Bulb though? 
um, yes, we did to make the Stardust. So I think probably, let's take a quick look at our hand. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter because we have the fertilizer in hand anyway. Uh, I'm going to get back the Rose Lover simply because it then makes our hand very live, even if we uh, Miracle Fertilizer. So I'm going to shuffle this here deck. Um, and then I will... Right, so we can't normal. But I'm going to, I'm still going to Miracle Fertilizer. And I think I will go for the Glurp Bulb. Simply because we'll be going plus one off the, um, off the formula we're going to make anyway. And we get to make Shooting Star Dragon. So that's really nice. I mean, we just drew into a charity. The deck's quite thin by now. Um, and obviously that means we're going to draw into more spell traps, uh, which are really nice late game. So we're going to get rid of one of the Miracle Fertilizers as we used uh, the Glow Bulb to make formula. Then we're going to go into the Big Daddy. Where are you, Big Daddy? Show yourself! There you go. Going to go to the Big Daddy. Have we used Charity this turn? How many are in Grave? I don't think we have. Uh, we went through, we went Hermitry into. No, we placed by the Cherub Sprout, of course we have. Um, sorry, my memory's a little bit silly. So, um, just off here, we have a treacherous trap hole. A really great trap, like honestly, this is ridiculous. We have the protection of a Felgram, we have the protection of a Shooting Star Dragon, we have a Hermitry on board. If we, if we can't win, Next turn, we're doing something seriously wrong. Um, and that's kind of how hard this deck combos. I'm going to go through a few more hands just so you see it is consistent and it's not just, you know, occasionally I'll get a hand that wombos the combos. Hey, as you can see, I have moved the camera and I've moved myself. Um, I've kind of moved the positioning and that was mainly because my feet freaking hurt. I was sitting in a pretty awkward position. But it was also just because I was worried about things getting off shot. So I've kind of, you know, wiggledy woggled it a little bit. Um, I'm going to do probably two more hands just because I don't want this to keep too long as every single turn is very long in this deck. Um, so I'm I'm just going to get on with it really. i got to stop laughing. Um, we've opened up Mount Sylvania and Lone Fire which is already really nice. A Glurp Bulb as well, Peacekeeper and an MST. Right, so what we want to do is we want to immediately go through the Lone Fire. Um, and go into Hermitry as we have the ability to stack something on top of our deck. I'm going to separate some of these cards. The Miracle Fertilizers still seem to be together. Um, and we're going to go for Hermitry. Here's our big daddy. Oh, wait, shooting Star Dragon's the big daddy. Don't be silly, Floss. That's oh, right, my name is Floss. How weird is that? Flossy. Anyway. <laughs> no. Don't know why I did that. I'm about to shuffle by sending with Sylvania anyway. We're going to do the Sylvania thing. Uh, probably send the Glurp Bulb as we can then use it. And I'd say stack the um, Peacekeeper on top of the deck. Uh, we have the option of Peacekeeper or Princess Sprout. If you can use print, uh, Peacekeeper, always do it instead of Princess Sprouting for an 8 because then you can get out the Hermitry. Um, whoopsie! Then you can always get out the extra Hermitry and get the extra excavations, and you can also have more engrave for if you draw Soul Charge or something like that. Um, more useful things. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to top deck the Peacekeeper, and we're going to excavate it, and then we're going to draw. And we draw into a Hermitry! Um, well, the, the Peacekeeper is going to activate and get us back our Lone Fire, and then we're just going to tribute it off and go for another Hermitry immediately, pretty much. There we go. So we've already got a fell ground on board, and this was a pretty mediocre opening hand, I'd say. Um, but it's it's a really nice thing we've already got. We're going to go for a hermitry. I unfortunately, excavated a spell, which is one of the first today, to be honest. Um, and then we already have our fell ground. There you go. Um, first time you want to always really go for the Felgrand, um, and then we'd set MSD. 
As you can see, I don't really run many traps in this deck. In fact, I only run one um, because I don't want to clog it too much um, because the ratios are really important to me in this deck. Um, I, I think we're going to go into second turn. We're going to assume we lost a unit from Felgrand and we lost all other cards on field. So I'm going to put these straight into that graveyard. All right. What do we draw? Let's go, girl. Another Mount Sylvania, which is... That's that's nice, that's nice. So we're gonna probably just straight away activate the Sylvania. Um, and I'd send the Guardi Oak, as it is not as good a target as Hermitry for if we manage to get a Rose Lover in Grave. Um, so Hermitry in hand is actually not too bad. Um, and we're much more likely at this time to get Rose Lover in Grave than to get a Miracle Fertilizer in our hand. So yeah, there we go. Uh, what we we were going to stack, uh, we will be normal summoning this Peacekeeper. And the reason that is okay is because we've got Glow Bulb in Grave. So we'll be able to go to Formula with it and it won't matter that it's an attack position um, 400 for only a little while. So what I'd actually do is stack the other Peacekeeper again as we can res our Lone Fire again. Um, it kind of sucks that we then won't be able to go for a Hermitry, but we'll still be able to go for, say, a Sage Qualia, which is really nice. So, I'm going to stack this on top of the deck. Normal summon the Peacekeeper. Excavate one. Uh, get out the Lone Fire. Oh, this is really high up, I'm sorry. Uh, and then I'm going to tribute the Lone Fire for next best thing to, uh, if we didn't have the Guardian Engrave at this point I would most definitely go for it because it excavates quite a lot and the attack difference between it and Sage Quarrier isn't very high whatsoever. But I'm still, I'm just going to go for, um, go for this at this time. Um, and also making a seven is quite nice. So we're, we're gonna go for we're gonna go for Sage Quarrier, and then we're gonna go blind. We're just gonna excavate one. It was the soul charge, so we're gonna put that put that right back there. But then we do get to uh, Guard Bulb. Send one to the grave, and then I'd sink for formula with the Peacekeeper we've got an attack position. You should never really be scared of normal summoning Peacekeeper in attack position if you've got things like Glow Bulb or Spore Engrave. I think it's just an ultimate rule that um, you shouldn't really be worried. Um, I know a lot of people uh, kind of see me do it and they're like, what are you doing? And it's like, I know I can get rid of it. I even if it's like, uh, I, I managed to make a rare and just pop it with its own effect or bounce back to hand. It's, yeah, <laughs> there are plenty of ways to get rid of it. And we're gonna draw a formula. Oh, we drew the Miracle Fertilizer. I can't remember. We normal summon the Peacekeeper, so we can't use it this turn. But honestly, that's left us in a really, really nice position for next turn. Um, and if we really did want to get rid of this Sage Quoia, we can always sync it with the formula. Um, I run one of pretty much every level in this deck. So I run the big beat stick that is Giganti Castle. So we've got a 28 and we've got a 20, uh, well this would be 31 on board. So this alone, this field, this is really nice. And if we did potentially lose everything, we've still got a Miracle Fertilizer. Um, we've, we can just still continue to make these plays. Um, and the chances of our Felgrand dying are very slim. So we'll probably still have that 2800. Um, which is really nice, and obviously we can use this to sync through for things like um, Leo or Star Eater if you needed them. So, um, obviously having every single eleven in this deck is really important. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that was that hand. I thought it was a little bit shaky at first, but, you know, you always kind of make do with what you get um, with this deck, and that's why you have to have such a very extra deck. Honestly, I think this deck would be pretty insane if they raised the extra deck. Um, which I think they should really do. Like, the game's gotten to a point where they're releasing so many monsters for the extra deck. Like, there's so many XYZs, there's so many synchros, um, that it's kind of inefficient for certain decks to not be able to have a larger extra deck. Um, and granted that a lot of decks might be quite ridiculous from this, um, rank fours would have a very varied engine, not that they don't already. 
Um, I think Shadows would be crazy if they can run more of their fusions. Um, Ritual Beasts would have such a great time running Synchro Engines, just just plugging my own deck there. Um, and yeah, honestly, I think it would be just a step up for the game, um, which is really nice. I'm gonna cut my deck. I don't know. I, I personally am one for the whole um, raising the extra deck thing. So again, we've opened up the, um, oh, we've opened up a nice target to summon Marsylvania. Ooh, this is a nice opening hand. So what you always want to do if you've got uh, the Sylvan spells in your hand, you're immediately going to go for your Lone Fire um, to start your plays. People who dig with charity first, I'm just like, what are you doing? Um, hmm. No, we don't, we're gonna go for the gonna go for the hammer tree. I was considering guardy oak, but we basically a lot of the time I play this deck quite briskly, and um, I don't want to do this. For the, I don't want to do that for this video. I don't want to just have crazy fun. Um, I'm showing you the most efficient plays at any given point. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do? I'm gonna Malsylvania. Gonna move you over there, hammer tree. Have fun next to your. Next to your mountain. Uh, and I'm gonna send the dandelion. I'm gonna get two tokens. And I'm going to place on top of my deck. Peacekeeper, I think, is the most effective thing to do at the moment. Um, simply because we just have the lone fire engrave and we don't have uh, too many hermit trees engrave or anything. I really love um, Peacekeeper in this deck. The fact that people in your room want Peacekeeper actually astounds me in a lot of ways. Uh, we're going to use the Hermitry, excavate to draw. We draw a Cherub Sprout, but that's okay. We can thin it out with our Cherub Sprout in hand anyway. Um, uh, do I want to get rid of the Lone Fire? You know, I always tribute the Lone Fire in this deck because it's so useful to have it engrave, even if it's just uh, your one of your only level three spore targets. So I'm gonna tribute that, and also we we do a lot with these tokens. So uh, I'm gonna tribute that off and go for. Where are you? Um, we could go for that. No, actually, we have a shooting star dragon play, which. I, I just always go for the shoot star dragon player, like, honestly, I think, what are you doing? Yes, I summon my miracle fertilizer in attack position. No, I'm gonna go for this age core, yeah. Now, at this point, I can see, since we have the Cherub Sprout and the Charity in our hand, that we have um, shooting star dragon, because glow bulb is a thing, and that's totally cool. So, we're gonna... Boop. And then I'm going to Charity. One, two, three. Oh, soul charge is really nice. We're gonna have that in our hand. Um, obviously, we, there's no point using it yet. Um, but I'm going to use the. I'm gonna stack the princess sprout, and I'm also going to stack the hermitry. Uh, the, the reason I want to do this is simply because if we, well, if we, we, we're going to draw into this anyway, the formula, basically. Oh no, we're, gonna, we're about to Cherub Sprout. So whatever it is, it's, it's going to get shuffled, and uh, the thing I'd rather have in deck at the moment is the Hermitry in case we manage to res alone fire soon. So yeah, that's basically my logic. Um, and I'm going to excavate with the Sage Koya, which then allows me to... Whiffle out thou, glow bulb. Honestly, since glow bulb came up off the list, this deck was just like, shooting star dragon? Shoot, you, you want more shooting star dragon? Um, we're gonna go for, oh well, uh, if, if you want to play this right, <laughs> you wanna go for the shooting star dragon. No, the stardust first, just for protection. So we're gonna go for stardust. And then we're going to use Glowball's effect. Send one to the graveyard. <laughs> Luckily it was a spell. Um, and then we're going to use a token to go for... Is this... Yep. <laughs> that always happens. I, I always use my extra deck as tokens when I'm testing. And it's always the one that's the token that I want to go for. Um, so... Yeah, we've got our shooting star dragon right here. Uh, we also draw off the formula. 
oh, Miracle Fertilizer, that was, that was pretty nice. So, on board at the moment, we could have summoned the, the Sage Koya earlier, however, I wanted to not clog my board, um, as I already had quite a lot of monsters on board. Um, next turn we have the Mount Sylvania if it doesn't go, and we also have the Flower Bot for it, which means we can go straight into charity if we want it. Um, other plays we have, I don't think we have a Spore Engrave, but um, we have a Soul Charge, so that doesn't matter. We also have Miracle Fertilizer! So, um, have we, have we even normal summon this turn? Have we, have we? I always forget. Uh, we, yeah, cause this, this is our opening turn, I'm pretty certain. Um, I can't remember. I think last game we had a two turn, but yeah, I've effectively made Shoon Star Dragon. And, um, th yeah, this, this is a really average <laughs> few first turns. The deck's really consistent. Um, Honestly, I, I, I love this deck and uh, I think it's great. The way it can just kind of be like, Yo, Shun Star Dragon out of nowhere! Um, that was my token. My token was an array. That's how good this deck is. Even your tokens are XYZ monsters. So, yeah. Um, if you've watched all the way to this video, congratulations. I have been blabbling to myself for a very long time now. But um, I hope this has kind of taught some people how to play Sylvan's kind of my list a bit better, a monster version, um, and a very synchro heavy build. Um, I personally think this is the best build of Sylvan's that is available to us at the moment. And a lot of people will say, though, but the rank 8 version is so much better! It's like, uh, sure, in your opinion, Felgrand Turbo, that's fine. But this deck can make uh, Felgrand as much as it wants, but it can also make so many other plays. It can make Shun Star Dragon, for goodness sake! What's also nice is it makes Felgrand and Shun Star Dragon a lot. And those two together can be actually quite a nice soft lock of just your opponent can't get over your board. They can't attack over, which is the general way that um, Felgrand gets... Um, Felgrand dies <laughs> and um, they also can't uh, bounce back the Shun Star Dragon or banish it which is what usually happens to it so th th that's just my opinion I think it's really nice um, so yeah uh, thank you for watching this video and I will see you later good luck have fun